Well, ladies and gentlemen, now at the World Esports and Gaming Summit, we're heading towards our next topic, which is how big data and analytics are disrupting the gaming industry. Well, for this, we're joined by our speaker now, Nicholas Sandel, the head of Sales ABS, who will be joining us. Well, Nicholas, uh, being the head of Sales at ABS with uh, nine plus years of experience within the esports industry and as a former pro CSGO player, he's providing esports data and technology for teams, sports books, and media companies all over the globe. Well, with this, I'd now like to invite on the stage and screen, Nicholas. Thank you so much for joining us. Over to you. Hey everyone, hope you're doing uh, very well. My name is Niklas and I work as uh, head of sales over at uh, ABIOS. First off, I would uh, obviously like to thank you guys for uh, listening in and also thank you for uh, making space for me to, uh, to be a speaker here at the event. Uh, let me tell you guys real quick about ABIOS. We are uh, currently one of the biggest esport data providers in the world and we help, uh, I mean, we help companies from from teams to media sites to betting companies with everything from uh, pre-game statistics to uh, to odds to uh, live streams and I mean kind of like everything that you can can think of when it comes to uh, to esport. So when we when we started the company back in 2013, the uh, the demand for data wasn't that big. I mean we were looking into CS, Dota, LOL, and uh, obviously, I mean, that's what we call the big three. It's basically what all the companies were asking for, but they were only looking for, let's say, how a match ended. Was it 1-0, was it 2-0, was it 2-1? It wasn't that much in-depth statistics. So it was more like if a company wanted to create an eSport calendar and they wanted to show some results, uh, we were the perfect solution. So Obviously, it was really good back then that we were able to get the results and everything that we needed for the for the eSport matches. But what is really fun today, and speaking of data, is that teams have finally realized that with the use of our API or with the use of in-depth data for eSports, they can really become uh, a better team with only looking at looking at the data. So, if we look at some of our customers like Navi, G2, Vitality or whatever, when they practice and when they look into our API, they can really see like, okay, what did we do wrong here, guys? Was this uh, force buy in Counter-Strike wrong? How much money do we spend every round on this? They can really find things that they can't, that they can't find otherwise, which, uh, which is really helpful for them. So if we look at the difference between data now and then, if we go back to Counter-Strike when I played professionally in uh, 2013, uh, it was just you went into the server at the at early and you left like you played for 12 hours straight and then you went to bed again and then it was just it was just repeat and there wasn't that much more you could do it was just go in play your heart out and go to bed and just play as much as possible today I mean since esports have grown so insanely fast and with like price pools if we look at the upcoming major that's coming in uh, in Stockholm in a couple of weeks they have a price pool of $2 million. So uh, it's so important that not only does your players need to be very good, obviously, but if you can get a little advantage by looking at the data in Counter-Strike, you will for sure have an advantage. You can already you already know that some orgs have employees that are better than others that really knows what to do with the data. And Astralis is a perfect example of that. Like they dig into the data, they can see that if they buy these grenades, if they buy the smoke grenades, if they buy HE grenades, they can calculate like, okay, we actually win uh, a few percent more rounds by having five smoke grenades on the entire team every single round, even if it costs a bit more, but it's still worth it because by using the data, they have calculated out that, okay, well, if we win 3% more rounds, that's, that's, that's worth the 300 euros. So, uh, yeah, I mean that just proves the importance of the data and also it proves how much we have uh, grown over the last years. I mean if someone would have said this to me and that they calculated out this seven years ago, I would just laugh at them. That would not be, it would be totally impossible. But now with people employed at the different organizations, it's so nice to see that they're taking, taking, uh, taking advantage of this. Now I'm speaking mostly about the professional organizations that is using the 
uh, the data as much as possible. But if we look at the amateur scene, if we look at you and me, or if we want to have a good time and just play play some Counter Strike, you can still go into so many different like tracker sites and see how you have been playing over the last couple months. And it's only available because obviously everyone wants to have a competitive scene. You want to be able to have as many good players as possible. So it's really important for you that you open up uh, APIs and stuff like that so people can find the data on themselves as well. So it becomes more fun and the, the skill gap is even higher just because they can, they can check your data or you can check your data. So if I'm going to try and summarize all of this, what I'm really trying to say here is that with the help of data, whether you're a team or if you're an, uh, if you're an amateur player, it doesn't really matter. With the help of the data, uh, the game that you play will be more competitive uh, and it will just make, I mean you as an amateur player, it will just make you better and the teams will get better and it will be more, more competitive than ever. So. Uh, I think that it's, it's clear to say that the data is for sure empowering the next generation of eSport players. That's, uh, that's for sure. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.